Hi everybody, this is Matt Ingram with uh, another video on altering the structure of shapefiles, specifically on uh, deleting or dissolving, deleting and dissolving features in QGIS. Uh, QGIS is an open source uh, GIS and spatial analysis uh, software. Uh, so the motivation for the following exercise is that we often have shapefiles with multiple, uh, multiple polygons uh, for the same unit of interest. So for instance, there might be a particular state within a country that has a main primary landmass and then has several small uh, islands, maybe even very small, uh, relatively inconsequential islands. And yet they're all numbered with the same unit ID. So you might have three, four, five, six, seven uh, polygons, uh, geometric units uh, that have the same spatial ID. If you're merging in uh, data, this can sometimes create trouble if, if you're merging uh, a single uh, piece of data into multiple units. Uh, this can also sometimes create problems in generating the spatial weights matrix if you're trying to figure out what exactly it means to be contiguous and there are multiple polygons involved or you're trying to figure out distance from one polygon to another um, and again there are multiple geometric or geographic units involved so frequently uh, it's best to reduce uh, your shapefile or, or simplify the structure of your shapefile without making any meaning, major meaningful changes to the, to the spatial structure of the shapefile. So basically you're trying to clean up um, or filter out small or redundant spatial units. So we can do this again by either deleting the very small polygons that are relatively inconsequential or by dissolving the multiple parts, the multiple polygons, into a single spatial unit. Um, and then we're going to be doing this in this free open source environment, uh, QGIS. The empirical example that we'll be working from is one from the Journal of Peace Research in 2010 by Osol and Yildirim. So let's take a quick look at that piece and then move quickly to QGIS. So here is the article that we're referencing. It's examining the, the effects of different forms of political violence on economic growth among Turkey's uh, provinces. And the shapefile that they're using looks like this. I obtained the replication data from the JPR website. It looks like this. Um, the shapefile isn't attached to the data and we don't have the coordinates, for instance, to do the geographically weighted regression that the authors do in the piece. So we want to join this data to uh, an appropriately structured shapefile. Here you can see that there are, if we count one through the end, there, there are 68 units, but minus the first header line, uh, we have 67 geographic units, so we want to find a shapefile with the appropriate 67 spatial units. So this is QGIS, and I've already downloaded a, a shapefile of the Turkish provinces um, from, the, from Esri in ArcGIS, and we're just going to load it in to QGIS. So if, if you haven't already looked at the tour of QGIS, we can load shapefiles using either the vector button at the top um, excuse me, by going to the layer button at the top. So if you go to layer, add layer, and add a vector layer, you can load the shapefile in here, or you can simply go to the left menu, the top one, and you can see that it says add vector layer. So it takes you to the same dialog box. Here you leave all the settings as they are, click browse. I've got it already set up to my working directory, and here is our Turkish uh, administrative shapefile. So we want to load the shapefile, and this is Turkey, right? These are the Turkish provinces. If we right-click on the shapefile, we can open up the attribute table, and we could... Uh, these are already sorted by name, so if you double-click on the field the label or the field name, you can sort by that field. We could also sort uh, by the ISO code, which 
looks like the unique identifier could also sort by the object ID. Um, here you can see that there there is this first unit, for instance, that has the same code. It's the same province, Adana, but has two different object ID numbers. So these are this is a single administrative unit or jurisdictional unit that is composed of two different polygons. So what does that look like? Essentially, if we could highlight them both, go back to the map, and we can see them highlighted down here. One is a primary landmass and one is a small island. You can see this by going back to the attribute table, looking at them both, and you can see over on the far right, the last column, uh, land type. The first polygon is a primary land mass. The second polygon is a very small island. Uh, we could just scroll this over to take a, take a, uh, a better look at it. You can also see that the shape size is much smaller for the very small island. Uh, indeed, if, if we only highlight the very small island and go back to our map, we can barely see it. It's not even noticeable. And even if you zoom in, as I have already, you can't uh, visually notice the very small island. So with a, with a shapefile like this, we would like to uh, delete that very small inconsequential island or dissolve it into the larger island into the larger land mass. Another thing we might look right now is just look at the total number of features. Um, and in ArcGIS this is usually listed at the bottom of your attribute table. Here we can just scroll down and you can see that we have 108. There's 108 rows in our attribute table so we have 108 polygons. We'd like to reduce that down to the 67 or so polygons that match uh, the data set from the replication file. So again, one of the ways that we could do this is to delete small polygons like this uh, selected polygon, or we could dissolve the two polygons with the same ISO code, right, with this same code, TR01. Um, we could delete them in, we could dissolve them into the same unit. So let's just demonstrate both techniques here. Uh, uh, since this is a very small island, I'll delete this unit. The first thing you want to do is toggle the editing. This is the top left button that looks like a little pencil. If you toggle this button, uh, you can visually see that you've uh, activated the toggle editing because these red lines appear on your map, on your map boundaries. Again, I'll just deactivate it. They're gone. If you activate it, they're back. So you know you're in, you know you're in editing mode when these bright, thick red lines with cross, acid, cross hatches appear. So once we've toggled editing, the third button from the left is the delete selected features button. So here we could just click on this, it'll delete the features. You'll notice that this button is activated right now. If we deselect the toggle editing button, this button is not activated. So this is a, this is a, a safeguard against accidentally deleting features from your shapefile. So again, let's activate uh, edi editing, toggle editing, and then delete the selected feature. You can see it just disappeared. There is only a single row now, a single polygon that represents Adano. So if we move down, you can see that there's, here's, there's a single polygon for TR02, there's a single polygon for 03, single polygon for 04, and so on, until we get to 07. And now we have three polygons. If we open up the attribute table, we can see that one is a primary landmass, one is a very small, one is a small island, and one is a very small island. We could highlight all three, just to see what they look like in our in our map. You can see they're all here, uh, but you can't really see the uh, the islands. Even if we turn off the editing, uh, well, hang on a second. Even if we turn off the editing. Uh, yes, let's save. Let's save the changes to. Well, for now, let's just dis we, let's discard the changes. So Adana comes back here. 
but let's um, let's minimize this in here. We've turned off editing, and you can see that there's a primary landmass even if we just highlight the two islands. they're not really visible. So again, if, you're, if your main research question is oriented towards province to province differences and you're primarily concerned with these much larger administrative units, uh, you're, you're probably on safe analytic, technical, methodological ground by uh, cleaning up your shapefile and deleting some of these very small islands that could generate some difficulties in merging data back and forth or in generating your spatial weights and some of your other, uh, going through some of your other analytic steps. So again, let's, let's go back here. Let's open up toggle editing again and let's delete that first unit that we deleted originally, uh, the very small island and then these other two, oh, excuse me, need to hit control and then select these. So we've selected two very small islands and one small island. And again, if your toggle editing is on, you could simply delete these. With some larger units, you might want to make a choice and dissolve them. For instance, I've just looked ahead here and noticed that uh, Istanbul, the province of Istanbul is composed of two primary land masses. You can see two primary land masses and then two small islands. Actually one small island and one very small island. So we'd really like to retain uh, what object ID 3110 and 3113. We could probably delete um, uh, objects 3111 and 3112, but one alternative solution at this point would be to dissolve these three units into a single unit. So just to show you what this looks like on the map, we're talking about these two units up here. I'm just going to turn off the editing button right now and discard the changes I've just made. So the the deleted units are going to come back. I just I don't want to save them into my same uh, shapefile right now. You could just resave this as a different shapefile or a working shapefile if you wanted to, but I'm just going to discard the changes right now. Uh, so here you can see more clearly without the toggle, without the editing button toggled, that we've got two primary land masses. I'll just show this a bit more clearly by bringing the attribute table forward. And here is one primary land mass. And on, on what would be considered the Asian continent, and one, excuse me, this one one other primary landmass which would be considered part of uh, part of the European um, continent. So again the, op the options here are to either delete the central two polygons which are small islands or to dissolve all four of these polygons into a single polygon. Now if you want to dissolve all of these polygons you need to highlight the selected polygons as we've just done and then go up to Vector and then top uh, menu options, down to Geo Processing Tools, and you'll see the option to dissolve there. Here you'll see that the input vector layer is the shapefile you've selected. You, you want to make sure this box is checked to only, only dissolve the selected features. If it's unselected, uh, you might run into some trouble. So just make sure that that's checked. Use only selected features. And then it's asking you to, which fields do you want to dissolve into the two units? And the safe or the default should always be, unless you have very specific things or items that you want to dissolve, uh, is to dissolve everything. So again, just go down to the bottom of the dissolve field options and you should see dissolve all there. So you're going to dissolve all of your information into your polygons. And then you want to output into a new shapefile. And I've, I've, you know, you can call it anything you like, but uh, we'll go to, just taking a second to load here. Uh, 
So here we are again. So it just loaded the working directory that we're in. And previously I was working with this dissolved uh, version of the turkey admin shapefile. So I'm just going to select that one again. Uh, yes, I'm going to choose to replace it. And then you can check this to add the resulting shapefile to your canvas if you want. So that'll just add the new shapefile, the new shapefile with the dissolved units to your canvas, which is this space on the left here. If you unclick it, it'll just save the new shapefile without adding a new shapefile here. So I like to unclick it just so that the canvas doesn't get too cluttered. And here you can click OK. And you get your successful message that it's been dissolved. You can then close out of here and move back to your attribute table and then keep moving through your different units. Here you see that there is a, another um, province that's composed of three polygons. You could go and check to see if it's composed of a primary landmass and small islands or you could simply dissolve them again. So again, to dissolve, just to demonstrate a second time, you go up to Vector, Geoprocessing Tools, select Dissolve. You've got your input layer. You're only going to use the selected features. And click on Dissolve All, which is at the bottom of your options from the Dissolve All or the Dissolve field. Uh, select your output shapefile, which I've been using as uh, simply a dissolved version or a added the label dissolve to the existing turkey admin. So I'll select this shapefile, say yes to replacing it, and I do not want to add the new shapefile to my canvas. So I'll click OK, get my successful message, and keep moving forward. So in doing so, eventually uh, we would clean up this attribute file and get to the portion, get to the point where the uh, dissolved, uh, the number of polygons, excuse me, which were originally 108 in the Turkish shapefile, provincial shapefile, we would reduce it down to hopefully close to 67 and would match the, uh, the replication data file that we obtained from the Journal of Peace Research website. In any case, this was a, just an instructional or an illustrative uh, video for the techniques of deleting and dissolving polygons in QGIS. Thank you.